Welcome to episode six of Morning Comes to Comfort. Morning Comes to Comfort. Franny is just outside of town walking through the desert. No coyotes. Although Franny has lived in these parts for her entire life, the desert is as difficult for her to navigate at night as it would be for someone raised in the jungle. She spent her night walking in large and small circles, concerned that she might encounter a coyote. No coyotes! She has not encountered any animals. However, at one point she did trip over a cactus. She still has dozens of needles sticking out of her legs. As the sun rises over the southern New Mexico desert, the sun is doing terrible things to Franny's complexion. No coyotes. She is not well. Frank wakes up in the basement of the Maple House. He doesn't remember lying down on this futon, but he immediately knows where he is. He had spent a lot of time in this basement when he was a boy. Good morning, Frank. He is not alone. Would you like a cup of coffee or something? His eyes adjust to the dim basement light. That woman named Spider is sitting across from him. God. She's scary. Behind Spider, Frank spies the small bathroom. I have to pee. Of course. You get yourself together. I'll go get the others. What are you going to do to me? Who, me? I just want to talk. Frank gets to his feet and moves to the bathroom. Spider walks up the basement stairs. She leaves the door at the top of the stairs wide open. Frank does not take immediate advantage of the open door. He really does have to use the restroom. When Frank is finished with his personal morning business, he stands in front of the sink. There is a neatly folded hand towel with a new packaged toothbrush lying on top of it. He washes his hands and his face. He brushes his teeth. He looks at himself in the mirror and holds the toothbrush like a shiv. He practices stabbing no one in the stomach a couple times. Frank opens the bathroom door and looks around the basement. He is still alone. With no time to work up his nerve, he gently climbs the basement stairs. He holds his toothbrush like a weapon. At the top of the stairs, he sees his daughter on the other side of the doorway. Amy May! It was supposed to be a whisper, but it comes out like a hoarse moan. Hey, Dad. Oh, God. Baby girl, let's get out of here. We can leave this place together. We can leave comfort anywhere you want. Anaheim, let's just go. They'll find you. I'm in trouble, Pumpkin. We need to leave right now. Listen to me. I'm your father. You need to trust me. I'm your daughter. You need to trust me. Frank certainly didn't feel like he could trust her one bit. This occurs to him as he walks back down the stairs. Defeated, Frank puts the toothbrush back in the bathroom. Franny finds her way back to her own house. She is exhausted. Her skin is hot pink. She is developing a strange sore on her face. She pulls her pants off, which is no easy feat. The cactus needles have stapled parts of her pants to her legs. She goes to her bathroom, and using tweezers, she removes all of the remaining needles from her legs. She drops each needle into the toilet. With all of the needles now removed, she sits down on the toilet and looks down at the many droplets of blood emerging from her pinprints. And she falls asleep on the toilet. Hello, Sheriff. Frank is startled to see who just joined him in the basement. It's Holly, the woman he had shot in the head just the night before. There are other people with her, but that is far less surprising to him. Half of her face is slightly paler than the other half. 
You really have to be looking for it to notice. And Frank definitely is. What is this? Holly is with Jed, Spider, and Amy May. Spider responds. You know those old spy movies where the villain gets cornered by the good guys and he reveals his entire evil plan and motives? Frank knows exactly what she is talking about, but he doesn't say anything. That is what's going on here. Holly, right? You're okay. How is that possible? I don't want to talk about that right now. She really doesn't. This isn't a good time for me to answer your questions, but this is an excellent time for you to answer mine. Amy May? You should pay attention, Dad. I brought Amy May down with us so that you would feel more comfortable talking. If she's going to distract you, I will ask her to leave. No. What do you want to know? Everything. Tell me everything. Frank starts at the beginning and proceeds to tell them everything. Morning Comes to Comfort will return after this important message. The soundtrack to Psycho Betty's From Planet Pussycat is available at all of the usual places. Welcome back to Morning Comes to Comfort. Franny is waking up from a lovely nap on her toilet. She can't feel her legs, but she does feel rested. Once she is able to stand on her feet, Franny ignores the prickly feeling in her legs from poor circulation and cactus needles. She washes herself and dresses herself. Then she once again focuses on the matter at hand. Annie Lee is in her trailer with her baby. She holds the child in her arms as she stares blankly at a boiling pot of water on the stove. A figure passes by her window. Annie Lee goes to the window and sees Franny outside. Franny is wadding up pieces of newspaper. She takes the wads and stuffs them under the weeds growing by the trailer park. Franny has one of those long lighters that people use to light grills or fires in fireplaces. She is using it to light the newspapers. What on earth? Annie Lee sets Leanne Kirsten down in her crib, grabs the little red fire extinguisher from the kitchen, and opens the back door to the trailer. What on earth are you up to, Franny? Did you see them? It's those maple kids. They're trying to burn down all of comfort. You could have burned down the whole trailer park. Me and my baby, what's wrong with you? It's that spider girl! Annie Lee looks deep into Franny's wild, crazy eyes. Franny is still holding the lighter. Are you talking about a superhero? What is wrong with you? Didn't you hear me? Those maple kids are trying to kill us all. Why don't you come in and rest for a bit? You look tired. I had a nap. Maybe you should come in anyway. Franny takes a quick sideways step, like a frightened animal that can't decide if it should run or attack. Franny, wait. Franny freezes. Then she breaks into a run. Annie Lee is confused, but quickly goes back into her trailer. Nine one one. What's your emergency? Hey, Maggie. Hey, Annie Lee. How's everything? Well, I'm worried. Franny just started a fire behind my trailer and tried to blame it on the Maple House. Of course she did. Is anything still burning? I put it out. Good girl. I'll tell the sheriff, but. But what? Have you seen him? I have good news, bad news, and really bad news for you. 
Frank is still sitting on the futon in the basement of the Maple House. He looks exhausted. Spider looks satisfied. What's the good news? I believe you. Frank glances over at Holly. Her face is completely healed in the time it took him to tell them everything. Spider gets his attention again. Would you like to hear the bad news, Frank? Frank thinks that Spider looks a little too eager to tell him the bad news. It unnerves him, and he turns back to Holly. What's the bad news? Holly, I think the sheriff would like for you to tell him the bad news. Isn't it obvious? I think so, but he doesn't seem to understand. I'll tell him the bad news if you'll tell him the really bad news. Deal. Frank? Yes? You know our secret. Frank considers denying it, denying everything. Why couldn't his life actually be as unreal as it seemed? He looks at his daughter. He's encouraged by the look on Amy May's face. He decides not to lie. I do know a secret. I just know there's something special about Holly. He turns back to Holly. So I know. What are you going to do about it? No, Sheriff. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Come again? Absolutely nothing. Are you sure? Yes. Do you promise? Yes. Dad, do you swear? Yes. Well then, would you like to hear the really bad news? Go ahead. You shot Holly's head all over the kitchen. I'm so sorry. You're going to clean it up now. Morning Comes to Comfort will return after this important message. The soundtrack to Psycho Betty's from Planet Pussycat is available at all of the usual places. Welcome back to Morning Comes to Comfort. Frank is standing in the kitchen of the Maple House wearing rubber gloves. At his feet, there is a bucket, soap, bleach, shop rags, and a dustpan. A corner of the kitchen is sprayed in dried blood, human flesh, and skull fragments. Frank is trying not to think about it. It's not easy to ignore. The smell is powerful. He distracts himself from the gore on the walls by focusing on the bullet hole. His mind calculates the trajectory that the bullet followed, and he imagines where he must have been standing when he fired it. Hell of a shot, really. It still smells bad. It is death. Human death. Dad? Frank snaps to attention when he hears Amy May. He takes the bucket to the sink and turns on the hot water. I'm working on it, Pumpkin. Are you okay? I mean, how are you? I don't know. Look at this. I'm relieved she's not dead. How can she not be dead? I don't know. Mostly, I'm relieved. Me too. Most people can't recover the way she did. Frank walks the bucket of water over to the yuck spots. Do you think they're going to let me leave? What do you mean? I mean, as soon as I'm done here, they're going to kill me. No one wants to kill you. Frank adds soap and bleach to the water. He wets a towel and begins to scrub the walls. I keep trying to picture myself sleeping in my own bed tonight. I just don't see it happening. Ugh. 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 Of all possible outcomes, sleeping in my bed tonight seems the least likely. Whatever. Why? Even now? Why the attitude? You're wrong about everything, and you get mad at me for it. It gives me attitude. Will you hand me that dustpan? I'm not allowed to help you. Frank gets the dustpan for himself. Using his hands, he sweeps some of Holly's former head parts onto the pan. He averts his eyes from the yuck and looks directly into the eyes of his daughter. How did she survive? Are you sure you want to know? 
Will they kill me if you tell me? You're kind of obsessed with that whole being killed thing. There's only been the one attempt on the life around here, and you pulled that trigger. Frank thinks about that for a bit. It's supernatural. Are you one of them? I think so. They told me I am. Vampires? What? Just tell me. Why is Holly still alive? It's evolution. What? Humans aren't raised by humans anymore. The young have learned to adapt. Frank fights back his every instinct to dismiss her, to be offended, to tell her she's crazy. Adapt how? We don't know. We just know it's happening. Some people grow wisdom teeth and some people don't. We don't know why. We don't know what it means. I raised you. No, you didn't. I was raised by media. You and I don't have any kind of substantial relationship. But it might not be too late to fix it. Frank is caught somewhere between angry and sad. He is in this surreal environment and he's very confused. His daughter seems strange to him, absurd. She's crazy. But one thing is certain, it's starting to smell a whole lot better. Franny is sitting on the ground beside the maple house. Her butt is on the ground and she has her legs stretched out in front of her like a V. She is using her hands to sweep up the dry pine needles and sticks into a pile. Franny clicks her lighter and sticks the flame into her pile. It begins to smoke. Franny lets the lighter go out because someone just opened the front door. She stands up to see who it is. She can't see anyone from this angle. She stamps out the smoking pile at her feet. There he is. Frank is leaving the Maple House. He walks up Maple Street without looking behind him. He's one of them now. Franny's feelings for Frank have changed over the past 24 hours. As she watches him walk away from her, she imagines that he spent his night being forced to give his soul to Satan. He resisted at first but was lured into evil with cheap thrills and loose women. Franny knows that he is different. So weak. She bends back down to her pile with her lighter in hand. Come on. The lighter does not like. This thing. This thing. If this thing doesn't light, I'm gonna blow up the whole town. Thank you for listening to episode 6 of Morning Comes to Comfort. My name is Aaron Hendren. I wrote this. This episode is copyright 2014 by Egg Murders Productions. This episode's cast included Justino Brokaw, Barbara Geary, Joanna Fergal, Jason Witter, Amy Bork, Evening Star Baron, Seruj Bingham, Laura Hosek, and Julie Hendren. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you back here next month for episode 7.